Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to this follow-up to my Motion 5 rigging tutorial. And there's a few things that I want to explain in a little bit more detail. But first of all, I need to do something which I should have done the first time around, and that's to give credit for this idea to my very clever development partner, Rob McIntosh. I'd love to claim this idea as my own, but it's his, and it's a very good one, I think. Now the first thing I need to explain is that the clone that we were using is simply a placeholder. It has no intrinsic qualities that we need to worry about. So let me just show you that by making a new group here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of that group. So right click, make clone layer. And because that group was empty, I'm going to just need to extend that clone from the beginning to the end. So I've gone to the first frame, hit I, gone to the last frame and hit O. And as you'll see here on the mini timeline, that clone layer now extends the full length. So I'll come over to the clone layer, and as before, we're going to add this to the rig. So add to pop-up. I've already made this pop-up here. So what I'm going to do is open up this group here where I've got a variety of things. So snapshot one is going to be my white solid. Sorry, that's snapshot three. Snapshot two is going to be the blue solid and snapshot one is going to be the yellow solid. So there you go, cycle through those. That's all very simple and straightforward. Let me just turn this group off for the time being and just look at some of the other contents of this group down here. I've made three shapes, star on the left, rectangle in the center, and octagon on the right. And I want to look at adding those to the rig instead. So bear in mind these positions as I do so. So let's start off with the star and add that to snapshot one. We can turn off this group and we can turn on our clone group. So the star, remember it was over on the left. I'm going to add it to snapshot one. Ah, it's ended up in the center. What about the others? Snapshot two, rectangle, well, that's in the center and that's fine. That's what we wanted. Snapshot three was the octagon. Let's add that. And again, that's added it into the center. And the reason for that is that the clone, if we look at the clone properties, everything's at zero. And it's assuming that we want our source objects to also be at zero. But supposing we don't want that, supposing we want to keep their original arrangement. Well, the answer to that is to add each of them to a new group. So I'm going to select the octagon, come to Object New Group. Remember, it was over on the right here. If I drag it into that group, and then we come back to our rig here, and instead of add adding the octagon, I'm going to add the group that the octagon is inside. So let's try that, add that group. And you see that preserves the position. However, there's something you want to avoid doing. Let me just try this with the star. So if I select the star and I right click and I group that. So obviously that's a shortcut for making a group out of that object. If we now add this star group to our pop-up, what, what happens then? So remember the star was over here on the left. If I add this group to the snapshot, it's back in the center. And that is because when you make a group in motion, it inherits the position of the original object, and the original object ends up back at zero. So that's no use to us here at all. We need to do what I did there with the octagon, which is to make a group and add the object to it. So we've talked about position here. Now I want to talk about scale. So I've grabbed this shot here, which is some flowers from the library. So it's content images, flowers 01, and I've just dragged that in. And so you probably know that most of these images are not 16.9. And in this instance, what it's done is it's automatically scaled it to 79.3. So what happens if I want to add those flowers to my pop-up? So let's come over to the pop-up and let's add those flowers directly. Again, you see something different, which is that instead of keeping that 79.3 scaling, it's inherited the 100% scaling of the clone. 
So again, there's an easy way around that, as we know, and that's to add the group instead of the original image. So those flowers are already in a group. Let me just add that group there, and you'll see it keeps the original scaling. OK, so I hope that's, that's explained the position and scaling concepts. One other thing before I go, I wanted to point out that we've only been looking at still images. Somebody asked a question about whether this relates to animated items as well. I've made a couple of text animations here using the built-in behaviors. So let's try adding those. So I'll add text tear in and let's see what happens. So that's text tear in there. Let's add the other one text gather in to snapshot two. And you'll see that works like that. Come back to snapshot three. So there you go. It works perfectly well with animations as well. It's not just for stills. OK, I hope that's been useful. If you have any more questions, please do raise them and maybe I'll do a further follow up. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again next time.